some different producers. Um, Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, who, you know, just won an Oscar um, for Soul. Um, probably the mo- most accomplished musical uh, uh, soundtrack scoring uh, people, composers of all time at this point. Maybe not all time, obviously John Williams there, but like they're they're starting to get up there. Yeah, um, of late anyway, they're clearly yeah. the most prolific. Uh, there's right. two Oscars to their name and they're scoring like two, three movies a year. Yeah. It's it's crazy. And obviously, you know, you think about them from nine inch nails. Would you have expected them to work with Halsey? Hmm. No, not I guess not, because it's not like they've been super active as the we're gonna be the muse for artists, right? Like I've just been mm-hmm. thinking about them as composers for film at this point, you know, and there's like a nine inch nails EP of what a few years ago, three, four years ago. But other mm-hmm. than that, I feel like we're not, we're, we're not hearing about Reznor and Ross teaming up with a list or so. And so, you know, that's, that hasn't been happening. So yeah, I definitely didn't see it coming. And especially when we talk, think about Halsey, who we've talked about a lot at this point, definitely didn't see this turn, this direction coming from her either. But no. uh, I think both, bo- bo- both factors of this, it's a, uh, welcome surprise yeah you know and that's the thing when i when i thought about halsey's reputation and just image as a celebrity she had obviously i think moved more into the pops pop sphere but when halsey first like broke out i really thought about her as like this like punk pop celebrity the music may not have always been that sound but that was just kind of the uh persona that she gave off at least in my opinion and so when she had the announcement right where she announced her next album the date it was dropping but also that Atticus Ross and Trent Reznor were producing it I was I was probably similar to you I was surprised but I was also really excited because it this felt like one of the first moves from Halsey that felt intentional about her career direction besides just wanting to make pop hits right and that's the thing is i don't think this record if i can't have love i want power is going to be her most commercially successful album but i do think this is probably the best music and probably the best album as a whole that she's put out not a perfect album anyway but the music on here is so much more interesting than any of the any of the stuff we were getting on the past albums, like uh, what Manic from 2020, yeah. mm-hmm. um, even Hopeless uh, Fountain Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, you can check out our review on that, but we weren't big fans, <laughs> I would say. So um, just really, it's nice to see you're going in an intentional direction. Yeah, I agree. Because like when we think about Manic, obviously her biggest album to date, largely due to Without Me's presence, her biggest song to date. That album was all over the place in the sense that it was adapting all kinds of pop trends, but not actually committing to anything. Right. Now, going, going rock is a bit of a pop trend right now. Look no further mm-hmm. than Machine Gun Kelly or all the, the TikTok kids that are trying to become musical artists like Olivia Rodrigo, Willow, yeah. we talked about right. two weeks ago. Yeah, Chase Hudson, Jane Hostler, all these people, whether they're serious musicians or not, becoming a pop punk person is a bit in vogue at this time. And Halsey gave us a taste of this, I think, on Manic with 3AM, which gave me some serious Avril Lavigne vibes at the time. Mm. But this new album is truly committing to like that whole vision. It, it's going way beyond all this dabbling that other pop artists might be doing. And it feels really, I think, genuine. And that's before you factor in that Reznor and Ross are adding obviously a lot of credibility to this but yeah I I didn't expect to see Halsey commit to something so um, steadfastly because she hadn't done this before you know and yeah uh, it's quite impressive yeah and again I I don't think this is a uh, like a no skips album but I think there's some songs on here that uh, I definitely found myself wanting to play back once the album ended wanting to hear more of and i think that really starts with the song lilith um track four and that's not saying any of those other you know first three aren't necessarily good songs but 
but Lilith, Lilith is the first one that you, I feel like you really get that like uh, punk rock, like post-industrial feel on the track that I just found to be a really exciting mix of Halsey's singing ability mixed with like the Reznor Ross touch. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the, the tradition of the first track has a lot of like cool pianos, kind of some of the stuff you hear more in like uh, more current Nine Inch Nails type production. But Lilith really, um, I thought stood out to me as the first track that I was like, this is like a, a warring punk song that was really cool. What other moments or tracks did you find yourself gravitating towards? Yeah, for me, so I, I think Girl's a Gun right after Lilith uh, stood out to me, but the, the four track mm-hmm. sequence, Darling, One, One, Two, One, Honey, and mm-hmm. Whispers, thought that was really high level. Yeah. And Darling, Darling's interesting because I think vocally is the first time Halsey's performance reminds you a bit of what Halsey's done in the past. So it's a little familiar in that regard, but still feels like a piece of this album. That One, One, Two, One, Honey. Again, sound good. I really like how her, her voice octaves change a little bit throughout these songs. It just there seems to be a lot more going on. And whispers. Um, I mean, the whispering stuff, you know, it's fucking good. It's real good. The, the whispers, they are good. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I I agree with you. I, I thought that that run was pretty strong. I Even the song before it, um, you asked for this. It has that like kind of like a washed out punk feel that I thought... Um, was a really interesting sound for her. So, you know, if you kind of pair that with Lilith, there's like a seven or eight track run there that really stands out. It, songs like The Lighthouse sound cool, but I don't know if that's really like the best work on the album. Yeah, a Bernie, um, I didn't really like too much, but the the fact that we got like a, a whole run in the middle of the album that was just really, really strong um i thought it was really impressive and you know in thinking about halsey as an artist i mean she does pretty good numbers just off of her fame and and, you know really strong and and rabid fan base at this point but um it's cool that she's like pushing herself and not getting complacent on you know just being able to put out whatever um and i think that's gonna obviously for us as people who are looking at this through a critical lens, uh, we are going to appreciate that. But I think her fans will also appreciate that because I have a feeling she's going to keep experimenting with different sounds and trying to push her music, which is always exciting for someone of her level. So, yeah, definitely. You know, I feel like I don't have a whole lot more to say. It's just like not something I saw coming. And I think Halsey's definitely presented herself as a high level pop artist, you know, yeah. after making this. Um, and that that's awesome. And I, I hope it's well received by her fans. You know, I think a big, a big part of this lyrically, and she talked about this a lot in her press, is uh, you know her her recent pregnancy, the birth of her child, um, and how that's changed how she's moved in the industry and how people have treated her. You know, when she was pregnant and stuff like that. So um, there's just a lot of ambition with this. So tough to not yeah. admire it. Also, uh, always a good sign when Lindsey Buckingham is willing to hop on and play some chords for you because he doesn't do a lot of work. So if he does, it's usually for uh, a good reason. I'm, I'm sure that was also a bit of the Ross and Reznor, uh, you know, pull there, but mm-hmm. um, give this a spin. Also, we haven't shouted it out, but we are going to have uh, songs from all the albums we've talked about on our Nostalgia Best of 2021 playlist. So check that out. 